your journey into the heart and soul of Greece. And now, member-supported Hellenic Public Radio, Cosmos FM 91.5, a bilingual Greek-American radio program coming to you every day through WNYE 91.5 FM. From the Demetrius and Georgia Kaloidis Broadcasting Studios to the greater New York area and worldwide through CosmosFM.org. Our programs air Monday through Friday from 7 to 8 p.m., Saturdays from noon to 3.30 p.m., and Sunday mornings from 9 to 1.30 p.m. Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, this is Ageliki. And this is Katerina. And you're listening to Counterpoint. Uh, first of all, χρόνια πολλά σε όσους γιορτάζουν σήμερα, Κωνσταντίνο και Ελένη. Άλλη χρόνια πολλά. 
And uh, we just listened to uh, Fratelli Amici Italiani, which is a song written by Stelios Fotiadis. It was dedicated to Italy and all that Italy went through during this crisis. And um, it featured a lot of uh, great singers in Greece, like Melina Slanidou, Glikeria, Yorgos Lalaras, Yanis Kotsiras, Fotini Dara, and, um, and many more. And also the Pediki uh, Chorodia to Spiru Labru. So um, I love artists to- getting together during this pandemic and just creating beautiful music for yes. all of us to, to relax and... And we'll ourselves. hear a lot more um, beautiful songs later on in the episode. Today we are talking about early intervention. And our very own Katerina Husos here is going to talk to us about her own company that she built, United Steps Therapy. Yes. And um, a little bit about the services they provide right after these announcements. We'll be back. Ενημέρωση, πολιτισμός, ψυχαγωγία. Κόσμος FM. Welcome back to Counterpoint. Uh, today's episode, Katerina and I are talking about autism, but also the wider umbrella of early intervention. So, Katerina, explain to us what what is early intervention. Thank you. That's a good introductory question. I think. I didn't even know myself until a couple of years ago, but it's a really, really important program under the umbrella of the Department of Health um, supervision. And it's essentially a program that provides evaluation and services to really young children. So from birth to three years old, and this is for children that are not, developing in the in the way that research shows that they should be developing so not learning or playing or just talking walking it's a lot of different early signs and early milestones that that we can talk about later um like other children their age obviously Every child is different and there's a lot of factors that could, you know, explain such a delay. Like we've seen a lot of delays in children that um, are being raised in a bilingual or multilingual household and it's, it's normal. But um, this program is available to all children. And that's what I really, really, really love about it, that it's completely free for all families, as, at least in, in New York. And it's regardless of whether the families have insurance or not, regardless of their immigration status, income, race you know it's i mean not the race part we'll talk about how there have been a lot of race disparities unfortunately even though it's free so yeah it's provided at no cost to all families and it's uh confidential obviously the families need to want to do this they can't Mm -hmm. nobody can force them to um but it's It's a really, in its inception, it's a really great program, especially because kids, you know, kids' brains at that, there's a lot of research that um, kids' brains at that that early stage are like sponges. You know, they're so... um, They can absorb a lot of information. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a really the earlier the better is right. is what um, I think is is true in this case. So, in other words, early intervention refers to kind of um, intervening in a child's life. The earlier the better, right? With education mm-hmm. and developmental therapy yeah. or, or other types of uh, strategies. So there are, there are several different there are several different services 
the um, the most frequent one is called special instruction. It's essentially like special education. And then depending on the child's development, they can start off with a couple hours per week. Uh, if it actually evolves into like this, the progress is monitored every couple months. Mm -hmm. So it's always like every kid has its own program, its own, it's called IFSB and it's... So it's customized then? Yes, a hundred percent. Everything okay. needs to be, all these uh, individual circumstances of a kid's family and life and background need to be taken into consideration when the child is evaluated um, and an individual plan is uh, created for each kid. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, it's, um, there are meetings every couple months to make sure that the plan is still on point to see what progress has been made and to see if additional hours of services need to be added. And then, of course, if there's um, a suspicion that the kid might um, be in the autism spectrum, then we see the introduction of applied behavior analysis services, or ABA. We can talk about that in more detail later. And that's usually, it could be up to 10 or even 20 hours per week. Okay, so from what you're saying, it sounds like the child that's receiving the early intervention services doesn't even have to be on the autism spectrum. Um, no, so, not at all. Okay, so it addresses every other type of mm -hmm. social, behavioral issue Emotional, that the child might be having. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cognitive, I, everything. And I love that you said that each child is unique, right? And they're, this type of therapy takes into account the child's, uh, you know, uh, setting in the family and the, the you know, background. That's the ideal, the ideal way. That's how it should be. I don't know. That's how it should be, case, right? But yeah. Unfortunately, we often tend to attach labels and say, you know, this kid is either autistic or they're not, but it's not, it's not that black and white, right? Now that you mentioned that, um, this is something I learned recently, but there's an effort to not use the word autistic b before the kid. So from now on, let's start saying kid with autism so that it's a person first approach. Got it. That's a good point. Um, and right after this song, we'll come back and Katerina will tell us a little bit more about the services they provide. Εγώ και εσύ μαζί Εγώ και εσύ μαζί Όταν η τύχη σου θα είναι φευγάτη Κι εσύ μακριά αυτό ζεστό σου κρεβάτη Τότε θυμίσου τη χρυσή συμβουλή Εγώ και εσύ μαζί Εγώ και εσύ μαζί Εγώ κι εσύ μαζί Εγώ κι εσύ μαζί Τα βασανά σου είναι και δικά μου Και για τους δύο μας χτυπάει η καρδιά μου Δυο φιλαράκια με μία ψυχή Εγώ κι εσύ μαζί Εγώ κι εσύ μαζί Μπορείς αν θες να βρεις πιο έξυπνους φίλους Να με μεγάλη και πιο δυνατή Μπορείς Αλλά να ξέρεις τη δικιά μου αγάπη Δεν θα στη δώσει φιλαράκο κανείς Κι όσο περνάνε και φεύγουν τα χρόνια Και η φιλία μας τα μένει αιώνια Είναι γραφτό μας μοιρακίνη 
Εγώ και εσύ μαζί Εγώ και εσύ μαζί Εγώ και εσύ μαζί Μόλι ακούσαμε το Εγώ και εσύ από τον Αλκίνο Ιωνίδη και τον Τζίμι Πανούση. I love that song. Ε, It always makes εδώ... me so happy. Yes, it's a beautiful song. Εμείς εδώ στο σπίτι. <laughs> you are listening to Cosmos FM 91.5. This is Counterpoint. And Katarina and I are talking today about early intervention. We just talked a little bit about what it means exactly. And um, since there are so many different service, services that go into it, Katarina, why don't you walk us through a little bit um, The, the type of services that you provide with uh, United Steps Therapy. Okay, so we started initially with uh, special instruction, it's called. So this is uh, what I mentioned before. The service is provided by special education teachers. And this is the most common um, service when at the first first, first side of like, kids not reaching their developmental milestones, this is a good uh, start. So it could be, uh, we've seen one or two or three hours per week or two half hours per week. So this is a good way to ease into early intervention and address any specific developmental issues. Um, so that's what we started with. And we also have a strong focus on autism-specific services, which is called applied behavior analysis. What is applied behavioral analysis? It's such an interesting approach. So it's an evidence-based therapy approach that has proven really successful in helping children with autism to achieve increased success in social skills, academics, and just life beyond. It's focused on improving behaviors, as the word, as the definition um implies and it can be used for so many things for basic skills engaging in social activities listening following instructions um, and even more complex things like reading or speaking having a conversation um, and more effectively communicating leading more independent lives like things that are so, so, so important for kids that will evolve into adults with autism to be able to live more independent lives. And starting early makes a really, really, really big difference, which is right. why I'm always preaching about it. Yes. So how, how young are the children that you're focusing on? I mean, early intervention is literally for kids from birth to three years old. Obviously, it's not as easy to track early signs really, really, really early from birth. Uh, but there are many different uh, scientific-based milestones uh, starting even as early as two or three months. So right. if parents are really, really, really paying attention, no, if I mean, the most important thing is that they know about the milestones and that they can identify, you know, if their kid is... Um, reaching them or not and like keeping track of them obviously it's it's a big list of things but um for specifically for autism some of the major signs early on is when kids are not 
um, like smiling at anyone by six months or they have really poor eye contact usually. Um, they're not showing uh, or sharing their interest and engaging in any social interactions with their family or other kids. Um, sometimes when they're not pointing even or babbling or making any gestures in those first year, let's say, I see. Um, and eventually later on, if there's no one word or communications by about 16 months and then two word phrases by two years old, we've seen research now that it could be potentially detected even before the two year, um, birthday. So you know, it's still it's still evolving. The good thing now in New York, at least, I'm not sure if this is implemented elsewhere, but pediatricians are now mandated to look for such signs earlier on. So hopefully that will increase the kids getting the required services. So it sounds like there's no no such thing as too early intervention, right? There are signs that are visible uh, from an early age, as long as the par- the parents are kind of on top of it. Um, and if you're able to see those signs and go to a, to seek professional help, then the benefit, it sounds like, is, is great when the kid is young, because like you said before, they absorb so much more. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, even if you're wrong and... There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong. Um, having God in services will only help. So it's right. it's not like there can be any negative benefit. Um, yeah, that's good that you bring that up because I think there's kind of a taboo in our society with, you know, seeking professional help. We touched on it in the previous episode when we were talking about, you know, going to see a therapist for psychological issues. And I just want to make a point of this. When people think of autism, you know, um, a lot of people think of like the Rain Man, like the movie <laughs> with uh, Dustin Hoffman, right? Where it's like the yeah. extreme version where someone is, you know, so intelligent and very antisocial. But I it's mean, not, it's yeah. a big spectrum, right? It is. It's a huge spectrum. Um, and even though there are some characteristics that are that define autism, um, which is the social communication impairment um, and repetitive interests or behaviors or movements. So those are like two of the things that are pretty much prevalent throughout the spectrum. There's still, the spectrum is really broad and, each kid is each, each kid's development is very different mm-hmm. and it, it depends on so many outside things exactly um, external factors and um, definitely behavioral therapy is is one of them right what about um occupational or physical therapy right so in exciting news we have also been approved as of um, a couple weeks ago, to provide speech therapy and occupational and physical therapy. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. It's, you know, we we badmouth Greek bureaucracy, (laughs) but (laughs) (laughs) um, New York is also pretty slow. It actually took us about, I think, more than a year and a half to even wow. to even start any services so wow. it's I remember you were complaining about how long <laughs> it's been taking uh, so it must have been a process Ximero se xana Chimera pu perna Ana podi su vieni ke pona Panda hamogela yes ke tora kataryese Σμίξε τα χιλάκια, μη βαριέσαι. 
Και Στήριξε χαρούμενα μπορείς Δες τη φωτεινή πλευρά της ζωής Μια φάρσα είναι η ζωή πολύ καλά στημένη Κι ο θάνατος γελάει και περιμένει Ό,τι βαραίνει πέτατο και στη σκηνή υποκλή σου Χαμογέλασε στο θεατή σου Στήριξε χαρούμενα μπορείς Δες τη φωτεινή πλευρά της ζωής Με τις γυναίκες ήσουνα πάντα ο σούπερ γκούφι και τώρα σε φωνάζουνε μα γκούφι Κι αν όλες σε αφήσανε σε κίνηγα η μια Η αιώνια η κάτε μια Σφύριξε χαρούμενα μπορείς Μες τη φωτεινή πλευρά της ζωής Κι αν σε κλείσει η τράπεζα μες στη φυλακή Κάθε μέρα θα είναι Κυριακή Μη σε νοιάζει όλα θα είναι πληρωμένα Αχ να με μαζεύανε και εμένα Σφύριξε χαρούμενα μπορείς Μες τη φωτεινή πλευρά της ζωής Όλα στη ζωή σου είναι δανεικά Χαμογέλα φέρ σου ευγενικά Μην το γρουσουζεύεις σκέψου θετικά Όλα στη ζωή είναι σκανά Σφύριξε χαρούμενα μπορείς Πες τη φωτεινή πλευρά της ζωής Η παράσταση μου κλείσει τελικά Όλα μοιάζουν με βεγγαλικά Η ζωή κι ο θάνατος είναι θεατρίνη Και γελούν από το καμαρίνι Όχι καμαρίνι, όχι καμαρίνι Και φεγωρία μα δεν ξέρω να σφυράμε με τι δηλαδή Δεν φωτεινή ρε παιδιά Παιδιά μην τρελανέστε Απ' το τίποτα ερχόμαστε Στο τίποτα πηγαίνουμε Μία ή άλλη είναι Σιγά ο φιλόσοφος να μου Ε, αλλάζει το πράγμα Ε, τώρα μάλιστα We just listened to "I Fotini Plevra Tizoiz" by Makrinak Sadevia, and this is what we try to do here at Cosmos FM. We try to focus on the bright side of life, even though we're going through this crisis. Um, right, Katerina? Yes, we're trying to. <laughs> It can be hard. It can be hard. There's Definitely. I mean, we've talked in all our previous episodes about how it's affected us, how it's affected our mental health. And in the context of my company and families that we serve, it's also been a big, big, big change because um, remote services have been approved uh, soon after the beginning of of um the quarantine and you know that was that was a big change because our clients are really really young and you know it's hard to keep them um motivated and focused through the screen so it's definitely been a challenge and unfortunately for cases um that have only like the non-autism cases that only have a couple like one or two hours per week 
we're seeing a lot of cancellations um, as it's it's really hard, um, you know, to for parents to try to provide for their kids, but also be fully attentive uh, during the video session right now. It's it's really Absolutely. intense for yeah. everyone. I can identify with what you're saying, actually, because my my mother is a teacher of special education and she um, she teaches English as a second language, which is not really the same area at all. But but still, she's been seeing a lot of challenges, you know, with kids staying at home and especially with the services that your company provides. I can imagine it's very important for the students to have some sort of regimented uh curriculum or some, some sort of um stability and that's not i really mean present. yeah especially for kids with autism um it's really important to have a structure in their schedule i think i think the autism cases have been pretty much consistent um i think those have been better in terms of i mean it's still hard doing everything via video but parents are more committed to receiving the services once there's an actual um, autism diagnosis or evaluation. So it's, it's more for our other cases. So before an autism diagnosis in the more initial stages, or there might never be one, but, when it's it's less hours per week and i think parents don't necessarily see the value of a video session yeah um so yeah we're still working on on that and on coordinating all the different sessions it's obviously on the bright side there's no commute time, so right. our, our teachers can take on more cases, which I think is a great way. So we're going to speak about this later on, but it, I think it could be a great way to uh, increase service provision in areas where not a lot of service providers want to go to. Mm-hmm. Um Unfortunately, it's something that it's one of our priorities to try and diversify our clients and our teachers as, as, as much as possible to encourage and encourage our teachers to, to provide services in areas that are underserved. Mm-hmm. And maybe video is the way if you're cutting the the commute time, you know, it's, it's easier to enter any home anywhere nowadays. That's a good point. Yeah. And despite the challenges, I mean, services are continuing. And um, like you said, I think video can be useful um, in a lot of ways, as long as both sides are invested in it. Right. Exactly. The goal is always for the parent or a caregiver or someone from the family to be involved and present and and part of the session. So it's, um, yeah, it's an essential part of early intervention. It's not just one-on-one, the therapist and the kid. Mm -hmm. Family needs to participate, but, or a caregiver if the parents are working, but via video, obviously the attention needs to be even bigger because the parent really uh, takes kind of the, the role of a co-teacher. So right. there's it's hard with all the stress and all the negativity to... I, I salute all the parents out there that need to, to take on that role. Um, and I think and everyone appreciates teachers more now. <laughs> yes, that's true. And and also the kids are going, you know, are adapting and it's hard for a lot of them, but they're also doing a great job, I think, because, you know, think about it if your child and, and your, your life just 
completely changes. You can't go out and play anymore and you're just stuck in front of a screen. I mean, it's hard for everyone, but, but, um, good job. I think for the little ones. Yeah. Thank you. I think for the little ones, it's, it's harder to like, I don't know if they're as aware of what's happening, you know, when you're under three, I don't know if you're that aware of everything that's going on outside and, Hopefully they won't be traumatized forever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how long this lasts, but yes, hopefully not. Yeah, but um, and of course, services like physical therapy, occupational therapy, where it's a more, it's an even more active role that's needed from the parents to physically interact with the kid and. Yeah, we're we're just starting those services, so I'll have updates later on. But um, yeah, we're hiring now more therapists for those additional sessions and services. And our goal after this is to expand to older kids as well and provide services to kids beyond three years old. That's wonderful. So United Steps is is growing in a lot of ways. And I think the way you're describing early intervention, it sounds like these services are essential regardless of whether or not the child has been diagnosed. You know, I would want my children to to receive individualized (laughs) attention. Are you kidding? Um, I know. (laughs) We should should, uh, advocate for that. And... Yes, and in fact, you <laughs> you participated in a in a rally that took place, or not a, not a rally, but it was a a walk for autism. Yeah, I try to do that. Um, there's at least one every year. Obviously, this year, I actually don't think it happened due to the coronavirus. Hmm. But, but yeah, there's definitely a lot to be improved in the system and we'll talk about it after the big break, but definitely more money needed to fund the services and more changes needed to reach diverse uh, populations that in a lot of underprivileged areas of the city are, are not receiving um, services, even if even if they've been evaluated, even if they're approved to receive services, a lot of times we see that specific um, prevalently black and or Hispanic neighborhoods are just not getting as many services, and it's it's a big part of our mission to try and improve that. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's a financial issue. But it also I think part of the fight is raising awareness and educating people as to, um, you know, the different signs to look out for and things like that. You know, now that families are at home so much, what are some creative things parents can do with their children to take advantage of the time? So this is true. Parents are working from home mostly. I mean, except essential workers obviously that I thank and salute but you know it's easy to fall into the trap of allowing kids to use screens and electronic devices and um, uh, you know be plugged more it's it's an easy solution a lot of the time I think and, that was an issue even before the crisis, unfortunately, because of, you know, the time that we live in. But I know, it's so much more but, now. I know. But if, and of course, there's some really great apps for kids, uh, educational ones. But for the really, really young ones, babies that are younger than 18 months, um, the guideline is that they should not have any screen time at all. So that's up to a year and a half, approximately. And then for kids over 18, so um, by two, three years old, maybe an hour a day together with a parent or a caregiver uh, would be the best. 
obviously that's that's the best practice uh i know it's hard especially when you're at home all day but you know there's so many other things that um families can do craft projects even by using even if you don't have a lot of things there's always things around like everyday things that families can use to get creative and, and do like a random craft project. Um, now that a lot of families are cooking, definitely, you know, have, have your kid get involved, uh, get involved and, and help and, and, and show them, you know, get them to touch the, the food and the, and get involved in the process which which definitely um, helps to learn new skills and to uh, improve their imagination and their creativity. Of course, you know, it's not advised to be outside too much, especially close to other people, but taking taking a walk or um spending yeah a little bit of time outside safely i think i think is really helpful yeah. and then you know drawing or reading books obviously my favorite right um those are some great tips um and it, like you said it's not always feasible because you know sometimes parents are really busy working from home and doing other things but um if you can get just a little bit of that in each day I think that's beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go right on to our news break and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Cosmos FM, το ελληνικό κοινοφελές ραδιόφωνο. Welcome back. You're listening to The Counterpoint, broadcasting live on Cosmos FM 91.5 through WNYE and also on cosmosfm.org. This is Ageliki. Yeah, this is Katerina. <laughs> and Katerina and I are talking today about uh, her company, United Steps Therapy, and early intervention in general. Before the news break, we talked a little bit, Katerina, about um, one of your goals as a company, which is to reach underserved populations, right? Tell us a little bit about what inspired that for you and um, the kinds of steps you're taking as a company to, to address the problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So as we've talked about in other episodes, um, my actual day job um, is an employment discrimination attorney and a lot of my background and my my studies and my work have been related to human rights and social justice. So this um, and I've worked I've been working a lot with people with disabilities actually in my in my day job. Uh, so it's become a big part of our mission at United Steps Therapy to really bridge the gap of underprivileged children receiving these essential services. And there was actually a really interesting uh, report that was published just uh, a couple months ago in December by Advocates for Children of New York and the Citizens Committee for Children in New York that exactly analyzes what we've been um, reading and talking about, about inequities in early intervention. And unfortunately, through analysis of data from the Department of Health, it's now clear that so many diverse and underprivileged communities and neighborhoods in New York are receiving less and less services. And there are a number of, of reasons behind that. 
Uh, one being that there's a lot of cases and not as many providers sometimes. Um, but this, this is a, a real problem and it's something that we are, we are thinking about a lot and we're trying to, to solve this problem. And part of it, I think, is in the hiring of, of providers, uh, making sure that it's something that we always talk uh, with them about in the beginning where, um, you know, whether they would be willing and encouraging them to venture out to some of these neighborhoods, especially neighborhoods in the Bronx, um, central Harlem, even Brooklyn. Um, there are many underrepresented areas. And unfortunately, from the data between 2016 and 2018, some of the neighborhoods with the lowest percentages of children found eligible for any services at all were low-income communities of color. So this is, this is obviously a big problem. And also neighborhoods where higher percentages of children that were actually found eligible for uh, early intervention, but did not get services or got services in lower rates, actually, um, are neighborhoods with higher populations of Black or Hispanic kids. So it's we're definitely trying to reach more um, diverse communities and, and families of color um, we've been actively pursuing building relationships with local community organizations in such areas and trying to inform the families and the communities about the services that are available, about starting early, it's uh, a process, but we're actively working on it and hoping to be a part of, of change. That's great. I love that that's part of your mission, and I applaud your company and, and you for working on that, because unfortunately, racial disparities are alive and well, and there are areas all, all throughout this country that um, receive, um, you know, fewer services uh, where the quality is worse, the resources aren't as um, rich. And so... Um, yeah, there great. should definitely be more money put into early intervention. And a good start, actually, to to figure out why there are so many gaps in services. Um, a new bill was passed in January that requires the city now to issue annual public reports on the provision of early intervention evaluations and services. So now this information is going to be out there and, you know, they can, we can identify more specifically the gaps in services by race and zip code every single year. That's a good start. And work towards improving that. Thank you, Katerina, for talking to us today about autism and early intervention and your company, United Steps Therapy. Congratulations for all your efforts. For those of our listeners who are interested in finding out more information, um, like the uh, topics we covered today, you can visit Katerina's company's website at www.unitedstepstherapy.com. And yeah, you can find us on Instagram at United Steps underscore early intervention. And also on Facebook, United Steps Therapy. We try and post informative and research based um, posts and, and good news in the, related to legislation and, and other developments in this field. So, yeah, reach out with any questions and I'll be happy to help. 
And uh, once again, Kronja Purla to our, all of our listeners who are celebrating today on this uh, on this uh, yurti. And um, we're going to close with a song by Mihailis Hadzijanis, Omor Fimera, and we hope that you all have a great night. Bye, guys. Τα γύρω και ελπίδε για μα. Είναι ένα δώρο η ζωή. Μα συχνά το ξεχνά. Στον ουρανό του Θεού η φωλιά. Και α μην είμαστε δυο μα πουλιά. Απολαμβάνω τη μέρα και χαμογελάω. Yeah.